I want some more people to jump on. When y'all jump off, I want a second ladder musician to jump on. Amen. Ain't God good tonight. I thank God for everyone coming out tonight. It was a cold night. It was a cold night out there. We just appreciate y'all coming out tonight. Tonight, God gave me a message about first things first. Somebody say first things first. Learning how to put God first. First things first. A lot of times we deal with problems in our life is because we do not know how to prioritize things. We do not know how to prioritize things. There's some things that's very important in life and there's some things that's sort of secondary. Sort of secondary. I personally will tell anyone, when you're getting ready to be saved, the devil will sometimes send a distraction for you. Have you ever seen someone that's trying to get in church and then all of a sudden, here come that man? Lord knows, all of a sudden, here come that woman to hinder him or to hinder her. And then they'll find, they'll get themselves out of order. They'll get things out of order. They'll wind up going after the woman or wind up going after the man and their priorities get out of order and then they wind up shipwrecked. I've seen it happen. Or they wound up in a bad marriage. Somebody said, ain't nothing like being in a bad marriage. Oh my goodness, it's better to be by yourself than in a bad marriage. Amen. Because sometimes we get our priorities out of order. Amen. Let's go to the word of God tonight. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 4 and 5. God, we ask that you open up our understanding as we open up the word of God tonight. And all God people say amen. amen. God give us a heart to receive the word of God in Jesus name. Amen. Make us good ground that we may hear the word of God. Understand the word of God. Lord God do the word of God. Lord receive the word of God. Lord be patient in an honest, God, good, an honest good heart God. And produce a harvest in Jesus name. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 verse number 4 and 5. 
See what the word of God says. I'm going to go ahead and read it since I'm almost there. Amen. And the Bible says, verse number four, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Amen? You got to learn how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. First things first, you got to fall in love with Jesus. You got to fall. Jesus Christ should mean more to you than anything on this earth. I love that old, old beautiful woman over there sitting on that, sitting on that, on that second row. I love, I love, I love, I love. But she's not more important to me than Jesus Christ, my relationship with Jesus Christ. I love my children. I love my job. But my job and my children and everything that I got, it, it cannot be compared to my relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything is secondary to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, your intellect is secondary to your relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondary. Secondary. Sometimes we love our children more than we love Jesus. Sometimes we love our husbands. Sometimes we love our wife more than we love Jesus. You ain't putting the first things first. I've told y'all before, anything you put before God, you run the risk of losing it. Somebody tell me why. We in Bible study tonight. Tell me why. Because he's a jealous God. He ain't going to let nothing steal his glory. He ain't going to let you worship nothing more than you worship him. Nothing. Nothing or no one will ever take the primary place in your life when you got a real relationship with God. Oh, y'all looking at me crazy like I'm all, like I'm, like I'm, what type of man want to be married to a woman? Oh, you know, I had this friend I grew up with. He's a male friend, you know, and then all of a sudden the male friend called on the phone. Hey, you know where I was we in high school? You're going to like, excuse me? Who are you? He get jealous. What about you ladies? Some some woman that 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 your husband, you married your husband 20 years, then somebody show up from high school or from college. Hey, how you doing? And then all of a sudden he's he walking with you and talking with you, then all of a sudden he forgot about you. Some of you sisters might slap him upside the head. Might wait till you finish talking. Okay, okay, you finish talking? He had a nice little conversation. He walked away, bam. You got your priorities out of order. The same as with God. Sometimes we get our priorities out of order with God. Sometimes we get so busy working. We don't have time to pray. And Lord knows, I work so hard, I don't have time to fast. So I got to stop by McDonald's and get me a couple of sausage and egg biscuits. And a couple of oranges and a couple of coffee. Because, you know, I'm so busy. Did you not know it takes more time to get a cup of coffee than to go to work home? But see, well, our priorities are out of order. And I'm not trying to sing like McDonald's. It could be Burger King. It could be wherever you get your food from. Hey, Amen. let's go to the Word of God. But see, when you put fasting out on the back burner, when you put prayer out on the back burner, when you put meditation on the Word of, on the word of God on the back burner, you slowly start going back. And I found out this in my walk with God. If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. There's no such thing as sitting still with God. So those of you people that's in the, the day that have not read your Bible and it's Wednesday, you've been so busy, you ain't even read your Bible, it's Wednesday, haven't picked up the book, haven't read the Bible, haven't prayed and saw the face of God. Your priorities are out of order. But yet we say, hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter number 22 and verse number 36 through 40. First things first. Got to get your priorities straight. We all, if we got to get our priorities in order, amen? Put the first thing first, amen? 
Amen? Before I got married, my one of my first priorities was I was going to get a house. Now, I'm not asking that y'all do this. You don't have to have a house when you get married. But before I got married, I was a part of this pastor that, that had this belief. He said, if you took her out of a house, you put her into a house at one time. And I actually believed that. I believed that if you took her out of the house, you put her in the house. If you took her out of an apartment, you put her in a apartment. You know what? The same state that she got out of, she should be going back in that same. She shouldn't go backwards. You didn't take her out of the house to put her on, up on the bridge. If you can't go up, at least go sideways. But do not go backwards. Baby, I'm in love. I want to get married. Ain't got no job. Ain't no no way we're gonna stay. Don't know what we got. But you just got faith. Baby, you need a job. You need a J O B. You need a place in a high position. Can I get an amen? Ain't God good? Good on Monday, Sunday. Yeah, all that. Let's go to the word of God. Matthew chapter number 22 and verse 36. Lake Lady Jones, can you read that for me, please? Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. First commandment. Go ahead. With all your heart. Don't that sound for me? Go ahead and read. And with all thy soul. Yes. And with all thy mind. All your mind. All your mind. What you thinking about? The OJs, I ain't going to go there because the young people be looking it up. There was a song called Your Body is Here with Me but your mind is on the other side of town. Some of y'all reminiscing the devil is alive. The devil is alive. You get to somebody say, he brought back that song. Are you? The devil <laughs> but it had a message to it. Your body was right here. But your mind was someplace else. Sometimes we in church, but our mind is someplace else. Y'all laughing at me? There's some truth to that. See, you can be in church, but your heart is someplace else. The Bible says where your treasures is, there will your heart be also. Now, if your treasures on money and money, 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 and you come to church and you see dollar bills, something wrong with that. See, you're in the presence of a king, you gotta get all that stuff off your mind. Well, oh, what about that food I left on the stove? Should've cut the stove off, it was halfway done. Should've cut it off. You at the house of God, now might as well go and praise the Lord. <laughs> the devil, y'all think I'm joking. You come in the house of God and the devil will be attacking your mind. Your mind is all over here, all over there. What about looking at a light bill? Here's a, here's a gas bill, too. Uh, telephone disconnect, waiting on my neck. This, that one is kind of jump running through your mind. Why are you in the presence of the king? Why are you in the presence of God? Your mind will be all over the place. You know my husband shouldn't have said that to me. I'm still mad. I'm mad at you. You know that boss man said that to me on my job? I'm mad at him. All that kind of junk bombarding your mind while you're in the house of God. Who passed the time? We ain't waiting on no ugly time. All that kind of junk messing with your mind. Don't worry about my time. It's my time. Y'all know what I'm going to say, right? What's next? If you don't like my time, then buy me another. Leave me alone. See, but your mind will wonder. And he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all that. Read it one more time. Because the people need to hear this again. Say it one more time. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Yes. With all thy soul. With all your soul. And with all thy mind. That means every bit of you. Your mind, your heart, your very being, you're supposed to love the Lord. That means if you're loving someone like this, Everybody else has got to be secondary. Oh, I love my wife and my children. They secondary. Because it's because of God I have them. 
See, when you know where the blessing comes from, you stop. No, you don't put you put them in the right perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read the next verse. This is the first and great commandment. Yes. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Wow. This is what society calls the golden rule. See, and the church, sometimes in church we don't even go by that. I don't understand. God help me. Maybe I'm just a little slow about this, but I don't understand how you can be in a church and somebody steal your husband, he go to the same church. I don't understand it. Somebody ain't following the golden rule. Somebody don't understand that you're going to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't want nobody talking to you that way, you ain't going to talk to other folks that way. If you don't want nobody gossiping about you, you ain't going to gossip about somebody else. If you don't want nobody thinking evil stuff against you, you ain't going to be thinking evil stuff against nobody else. That's the golden rule. And sometimes in church, we don't even follow that. Yes, Lord. We got to get our priorities straight. First thing, somebody say, first things first. First things first. Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 40. Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 40. Somebody say, I'm going to get my priorities straight. See, you don't have time for New Year's resolution. Just, just get your priorities straight right now. I ain't waiting until January 1st to get my priorities straight. I'm getting it right right now. Get your priorities in order right now. Who promised you tomorrow? Tomorrow is not promised to none of us. You can't wait to do a New Year's resolution. Well, when the New Year's come, I'm going to do this and that. Our New Year's come. Them people be lying. You go a good two weeks and then you drop your New Year's resolution. I'm going to save some money this year. I'm going to get my income tax and they ain't going to spend it all. Come, come March 1st, all that money gone. Yeah, somebody cried because they date been there. <laughs> I'm going to start eating right come New Year's. I'm going to start eating right sell come New Year's. I ain't going to eat right right now. I'm going to start eating right come New Year's. Leave it alone. Let's go. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Luke chapter number 10 and verse number 40. Somebody say, you pick it, pal. Leave it alone. That's why I'm pulling up real quick from now. Okay, let's go to the Word of God. Let's start with verse number uh, number 38. Now it came to pass as they went he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Stop right there. Martha the clear fact that Martha owned the house was a big deal. The clear fact that Martha being a woman owned her own house was a big deal. Shall we go a little further? He said, and, and she had a sister called Mary. Sound like Martha was a go-getter. Don't it sound like Martha was a go-getter? Which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was coming about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Mm -mm -mm. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Now, I'm the one that believes in servanthood. I preach servanthood. It's important to servanthood. But there comes the time for serving and there comes the time for praying. That's right. There comes the time for serving and then there comes the time of sitting. Mark, oh my goodness. See what Jesus is going to say. Jesus answered and said unto her, Mark the Mark, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Jesus told her what was going on. Now, Martha was serving him. 
Sometimes we get 